Hey everybody, it is Natalie from Power Moon Tarot. Welcome to your reading. Today's reading is called It's Electric, Their Thoughts and Feelings. And you can go ahead and choose your pile based on the three piles below. So for pile number one, we have Sagittarius and I see. Okay, so the card says Sagittarius I see. And it has a purple background on it. If you're drawn to any of that, you may choose pile number one. For pile number two, we have the Aquarius pile. And it says, I know. And we have more of a pink background here for pile number two. And for pile number three, we have Virgo, I analyze. And we have more of earth tones here in the background. So you may pick your pile. Maybe you have Sagittarius, Aquarius, or Virgo in your chart, and you want to pick based on that, or the person you're here has that in their chart, or you just either love one of those signs or hate one of those signs, whatever you're feeling, or if the colors are more drawing you in, go ahead and choose based on color as well. So you can find the in the description box below the link to the timestamps and... You may watch more than one pile too if you're really feeling the energy or you've got more than one person that you are thinking of right now. So let's go ahead and begin with pile number one. Pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose the Sagittarius card. Thank you so much for being here today. Today's reading is called It's Electric, Their Thoughts and Feelings. I just got in from a nice evening walk and I'm ready to do some divination for you, pile number one. So let's go ahead and see for my pile number ones who chose the Sagittarius pile. Let's find out their thoughts and feelings. It's electric. Their thoughts and feelings for pile number one, please. Their thoughts and feelings for pile number one, please. Okay. I'm getting something about quiet time someone needing quiet time or having quiet time, which can be quite lovely. We have five of cups on the bottom of the deck, needs some time to reflect, to be alone with one's thoughts and emotions and feelings um, before they well up to the point where they become harder to deal with within ourselves. And that happens sometimes. We've got the Prince of Pentacles. Okay, I'm already getting something about this person, pile number one that they like to be strong at all times and they don't like showing what's wrong with them. They like to have a strong outer shell and they were raised to believe that they need to be in control at all times and they shouldn't be weak or vulnerable and that they should always be strong, okay? And I am seeing um, potatoes or like a bowl of potatoes or a bunch of potatoes or like a bowl of nuts, you know how they have like, you know, like a, people will have like a bowl of nuts that they'll eat. Anyway, I am seeing something about that, about peanuts, nuts, or potatoes. Okay, so I just have to tell you that is what I am seeing. And um, I'm also seeing somebody who has like a strapless bra that is like a tan color or a nude color or kind of like a see-through uh, tannish nude color, okay? So I am seeing that, okay? And I also see a scar, someone who has a scar beneath their knee and has like really strong thighs, okay? And has a lot of um, leg muscles and is very like, you know, has a lot of stamina, put it that way, okay, pile? Number one we have here, we have the star card. Ooh, ooh la la, so refreshing. Pile number one, are you refreshing? I feel like you're a breath of fresh air for this person. You're very sparkly, okay? 
they feel like they're just kind of playing over here in the corning corner corning <laughs> over here in the corner and that you're like they're like just boring old applesauce and you're over here that you're like cinnamon applesauce okay you're like the twinkling applesauce <laughs> i don't know why that just came up but we've got the six of swords okay and you know sometimes weirdos they have really funny goofy silly conversations with one another and um i can see that with the six of swords where um they're, you know, with the Six of Swords, we're trying to come to a common understanding of something in order to move the dialogue forward, in order to move things forward. And the Six of Swords is usually an indication that there isn't a lot of, you know, bad blood or there's not a lot of... Now, don't get me wrong. I feel both you and this person could be very stubborn sometimes, all right, and have your own ideas about things, your own routines, the way you do things, etc., but the Six of Swords talks really of being able to come to agreement or being able to, like, come to consensus, okay? And we've got the Three of Wands. And the Three of Wands, especially in this deck, is very um, golden. It's very much uh, hyper, hyper-go-lucky, hyper-active, hyper-fun, hyper-athletic, hyper-outgoing type of a card, okay? And we could have a situation where someone here is more cerebral and then the other person's more like athletic or more active. I do see something about that here. But there's an interest on making an agreement and moving something forward, I feel like with the three of wands, all right? And um, I feel like this person thinks like that you're very open to their ideas and that you also want to move things forward to and that you are like you know really nice to talk to because you have a super open mind you're very smart um bang and body okay we see the star card here bang and body and you're very comfortable with yourself and it shows okay and um you know there's this energy of like wanting to scoop you up or wanting to carry you or wanting to pick you up and kiss you. I, I can kind of see that kind of energy showing up here with the three of wands, pile number one, or wanting to like scoop you up in their arms. Now with the five of cups on the bottom of the deck, we have some saltiness underneath it, okay? We've got some bitterness or some things that, and again, it doesn't have to be horrible. It could just be um, where it's quiet. Right, and I was talking about that as I was channeling. I'm like, oh, I feel like quiet time or something like that. So we have Heartbreak Hotel, Meetups in Secret. All right, and you know, the Prince of Pentacles trying to come up with a plan to see you in secret. Ooh, planning a date, okay? Planning a date, a date conversation. And planning a meetup in secret or planning to see each other at a future date. And, um, you know, the Five of Cups can also be missing someone too as well. And then planning to secret rendezvous at a later time. We've got the Six of Swords and Dirty Laundry and Gossip About Relationships. I don't think either one of you really care what anyone else is saying or thinking about either of you. And um, I mean, maybe there is a reason why you guys are keeping things under the radar right now or why you have to keep things under the radar because people are nosy, gossipy, backbiting bitches. You know, that can really be the five of cups with that type of energy. And, um, you know, there could also be like jealous energy or people who um, get way too up in your business and are very jealous and vindictive and things like that too with the five of cups. And so it's like, let's just pretend like nothing is happening. And then in secret, we're really going to do X, Y, Z, one, two, three together. But I don't think either one of you really at a fundamental level really gives a shit about the gossip either. Like let them eat cake, right? Pile them. I know nobody likes that saying anymore, but I mean, let the gossipers eat cake. Let them, um, you know, let them sit around and gorge themselves on whatever it is that they want to gorge themselves on. I don't, I think you could care less. And 
I don't think that this person really cares either. There may be some vindictive energy from someone else in the background, but I mean, I don't think either one of you really gives a, you know, as they say, if I'm gonna swear right now, pal number one, I don't think either one of you really gives a flying fuck about what anyone else thinks. And um, if, you know, you're secretly planning and hoping and looking forward um, and wanting to see one another is what I feel here. And um, the Three of Wands is in a real exciting, uh, momentous type of an energy. Like it's a momentous occasion and a reason to celebrate. And it talks about, we have this claiming, make it up, make it official, level up. Make it official, level up. All right. And, um, you know, maybe there's going to be a conversation over a dinner or a conversation you two are going to have because you can see the two dinner going on here. Um, but, you know, there's, I feel this person is highly motivated um, to claim you or highly motivated to step up to the plate here and is planning, wanting to see you, planning to see you, planning something. Um, there could be jealous, vindictive, angry people in the background that are not too happy about the developments between you two. But at this point, I don't think either one of you care. Okay. <laughs> so there we go. We've got frog and transition. This is a powerful time of change. You are being called to connect with the world of emotions and feminine energies. Now this person in their life is going through a powerful type of change and they're trying to stabilize themselves in a time of a lot of change. And I feel this person could have a lot of responsibility in their life right now. Um, and you know, there's, they feel, they feel a transition in the energy from being around you. They feel more clean energetically and they feel like more relaxed is what I feel. They feel relaxed, happy, and excited when they are around you. Star card, six of swords, three of wands. Relaxed, happy, and engaged, and momentum, and all of that. Um, and they are tired of living in Heartbreak Hotel, and I feel like this person really does want to, you know, and they may not be the biggest risk taker with the Prince of Pentacles here, but I feel like you're just too tempting or you're too, like they're, you're their kind of like ideal of what they would sort of look to. And um, they are in an awkward time of transition in their life right now. And they're feeling kind of topsy-turvy. Um, and, but they are attracted. I feel like they're attracted to people now who do have a good handle on their emotions and their feminine energies and who are spiritual and energetic healers and cleansers and all of that. And it's all about moving that emotional energy so it can be free to express itself, okay? And we have here, ooh, wow. <laughs> Your guys' song from this person is Cute Thing, Car Seat Headrest by the group Car, Car Seat Headdress, Headrest, okay? And your song is called Cute Thing. And this is what they're telling you. I got so fucking romantic, I apologize. Let me light your cigarette. Come visit Kansas for a week of debauchery. Songs and high fives and weird sex. Oh my God, I love that. With, this, with the Six of Swords can definitely be that weirdo energy and the Star Card too, total weirdo type of energy. Songs and high fives and weird sex. Cute thing, don't be rude, all right? So this person is telling you, I got so fucking romantic, I apologize. Let me light your cigarette. Come visit me in Kansas for a week of debauchery. Songs and high fives and weird sex. <laughs> oh my God, what a funny, I have that, this card hasn't come up for a while, so that is funny. We have, I wake up in the middle of the night and I feel so sad when I realize you're not here. Yeah, quiet times, sad, missing you, five of cups for sure. I don't really feel like this person has like bitterness towards you, pile number one. Other people may be bitter about what's going on or, you know, between you and this person, but 
They're saying, I'm sorry, I got so fucking romantic, I apologize. All right, and I feel like this person is in a transition of getting more in touch with their emotions and they are feeling romantic towards you and they're like, I apologize, I got too romantic and maybe made you uncomfortable. Um, let me light your cigarette, okay? And, uh, oh, <laughs> and it says, I'm sorry and alone, okay? And they're like, shit, I should have, under this three of wands, shit, I should have stepped up and claimed it and made a move when I had a chance and now I'm sitting here alone and I'm sorry and I don't want to be alone and in the cold, you know, forgive me. I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm alone and I feel sorry and, um, yeah. And I also feel like this person's like, I wanted to step up and claim it. I wanted to step up and like show you everything, but I was also afraid that like, you know, I was also afraid that you, like I was being too romantic or I was being, being too cheesy or that you didn't like me like that. Okay. And I feel like this person is saying, I am like in the dumps with the five of cups. They're really good at hiding it. They can go about their business and their day to day and no one would know the difference, but inside their heart, like we know what's true here. We have Lena Valerian, the undaunted. Okay. And I'm going to read that card here in a minute. And then we have distance. Yeah, there is, um, you know, there's a difference between standing in the fires of life and owning up to what is happening and taking space and distance, right? And I feel like this, you know, either you or this person, or maybe both of you, it feels like you're standing in the fire of life and facing things separately a little bit here. The distance may be hurting both of you. Um, and I want to read this, um, Lena Valerian and the Undaunted card here. Let me find what it says, actually. Where is, oh, here's my book. I'm like, where'd it go? All right. Take a moment of silence for the wonderful House of Dragons. Okay. Though the odds may be against you and the challenges you face are great, you have what it takes to face them head on. We don't always get to choose our circumstances or our obstacles, but we do get to choose how we face them. The struggle you find yourself may be an overwhelming, but you must try to look at it as a chance to surprise yourself with the courage and grace you didn't know you had. Reach down within yourself and channel the strength that lies within your core. And the three of wands in the tarot is the Lord of established strength. So I love that message of reach down within yourself and channel the strength that lies within your core. And I feel like, you know, um, it's like if we have to go through this pain, we should be going through it together instead of separately with this distance card, okay? And um, sometimes it can feel like everyone's against us or everyone's against a connection or everyone's talking behind our backs or you know, we're in it alone, right? And sometimes we feel like in life we're in the struggle alone and there's no one there um, to, and again, this person, what I talked about earlier, like they're used to doing things on their own. They're used to taking on all their challenges by themselves, but I feel like they feel kind of sad um, because they want you to know how they're feeling is what I think here, okay? And I do feel like this person's very impressed by you because you are very undaunted when it comes to challenges. You face them head on and um, you also remind this person about the good things in life and how to smile again and how to laugh and how to relax and how to be nerdy and geeky and have weird sex and be goofy and funny in ways too, is what I feel. And we have here, your dreams need a practical plan, full moon and Taurus. So in order to get over the distance or get over the hump here in this connection, um, I feel like this person is saying, I want to touch you. I want to be close to you. And again, full moon and Taurus. Somebody here is very stubborn or both of you can be very stubborn. Okay, this is the Sagittarius card, but we could have Taurus energy here. We could have Aquarius energy in this pile as well. Okay, Taurus energy, like I said, too. Scorpionic energy with the Five of Cups. Now, um, 
you know, it's like, I want to tell you what's happening. I want to tell you, um, I want to stand in the, in the fires of life with you and face the things that scare us. I want to stand in the fire and, um, and I feel like this person is saying, no matter how intense things get for me, I feel like you're a person that could handle everything that's happening around me. Um, and then some, and then I also feel like this person is saying, I'm sorry if I made it seem like I don't need you because I do need you. And, um, I feel like this, per this person is saying, I want to touch you. I want to reach out to you and I want to touch you, but I don't know how, or I want to, um, feel you next to me and I want to be close to you, but I don't know how. Like there could be practical reasons why you guys are not, th that can't happen right now. Or there could be just, um, you know, mental blocks with regard to that. But, you know, you and this person, your dreams need a practical time, a practical plan here. And there has been like a growing distance or I do feel like this person regrets the distance or is sad about the distance though and um they do feel very alone they're like i'm sorry i'm alone okay and i don't feel they're with anyone else okay i don't feel like this person is with anyone else i feel like they are alone emotionally mentally spiritually physically okay so pile number one, that is what I am getting for you, my friends. I hope that that reading resonated for you. I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings about the reading in the description box below. And if that resonated for you, thank you so much, pile number one, and take care. Let's move on to pile number two. Pile number two, welcome to your reading. You chose the Aquarius card and your reading is called It's Electric, Their Thoughts and Feelings. So pile number two, let's get into it, my loves. And um, maybe you're an Aquarius or they are, or you just liked the background on this card and you're like, it's funky, I'll choose pile number two. So let's go ahead and get your cards out here, my Funkadelic princes and princesses in, ooh, flying card there, in pile number two. Let's go ahead and see flying all over the place today. Let's see, it's electric, their thoughts and feelings. What are their thoughts and feelings for pile number two? Ooh, it is electric, it is all over the place. Let's see, what are their thoughts and feelings for pile number two? There we go. We have seven of wands. Whenever I see this card, I always want to sing, stop in the name of love before you break my heart. <laughs> anyway, file number two. Let's see what else. We've got nine of cups. Ooh, that looks happy. We have the ace of swords. Ooh, invading your mind taking a nice bubble bath with you. Let's talk about books. Let's talk about movies. Let's talk about nerdy shit. Let's geek out on information about each other. Show me your old baby pictures. So show me pictures of yourself when you were a toddler. Talk to me about what it was like growing up to you, growing up for you. Tell me about your greatest fears and your greatest accomplishments. Ace of wands, right? Open the door or ace of swords. I'm sorry. Open up the doors to communication. What's funny, pile number two, is I feel like when you guys would meet people in the past, like you guys would be like ultra curious about everyone. You'd be so open with them. You'd be like laughing and talking and sharing everything and listening to everything. And I feel like, you know, your friends or people around you or even within yourself, you've had to like slow that down a little bit or you have had to like put boundaries around some of that because I feel like the ace of swords and the nine of cups is like a very open energy and um because I feel like you're genuinely curious about people some of you may even have like the nerdy glasses or the black 
the big black wire rim rimmed glasses that you wear sometimes. Um, I do feel like some of you here, you could have a best friend who's very protective of you as well. And, um, or you're very protective of each other, or maybe it's a sister and you two are very protective of each other or a best friend that's like a sister. Okay, very protective of one another. But I feel like this person's like, I feel like I can talk to you about anything, okay? They're like, wow, I feel like I've known you forever. I feel like I can talk to you about anything. You're one of the nicest people I've ever talked to. You always make time for me. You always listen. You always make me laugh. You're always goofy. You always have, are full of fun facts and weird knowledge, okay? And, um... You know, I feel like this person, they could be into water sports or they could be into like taking, you know, going into the hot tub with you or taking baths with you. Um, but the thing is, is with the Ace of Swords, the sky is the limit, okay? And it's like, oh, we've got so many things to talk about. We've got so many things in common. Oh, wow, like let's keep. And I feel like what this person is saying, you have a really open mind, pile number two. And you have a way of making everybody feel welcome and included. And you're hyper interested in what people have to say. And you got such a cool, easygoing nature to you. Um, and this person's like, yeah, it's fucking rad. I like it. Okay. So this person feels very comfortable with you. And they feel very like that you, they can say anything to you. Because you're just like super cool and open about everything. And um, we've got the three of wands. Let's go explore together, okay? Um, let's go on a fun date, you know? And um, I'm getting some of you having a phone conversation with this person, or maybe you told this person, I'm getting in the shower, or I'm taking a bath, um, or you like to have luxury baths sometimes and really make it nice and fun and with a glass of wine, okay? But it's like, yeah, we're gonna go out and we're gonna do some fun shit together, okay? I feel like you two could go visit a place together that you've always wanted to see. Um, like a monument or um, a place where they filmed a show. I've been geeking out recently over the show Dexter, just side note, pile number two. And there's like actual tours that you can go um, when the show was originally filmed, like for the first season in Miami. And you can go and like tour around and see where like his apartment was in Miami and all this stuff. I mean, this is this is the kind of, I mean, now some of you are like, I don't know what Dexter is. What the hell are you talking about, Natalie? I have no idea. Now, here's the thing. I feel like there is a plan or an idea that comes together for you and this person to go visit something together or to go check something out together. And it's like, oh yeah, I always wanted to go there too. Let's go to this place, whether it's, you know, to the arcade or to um, a certain movie or to check out a certain um, weird event, you know? It's like, let's go and I've always, or, you know, I remember when I was in New Orleans, a friend of mine and I went on a vampire walking tour. <laughs> and I was like, this is fun. Anyway, I see, I love that kind of stuff, pile number two. And I hope you do too, because sometimes it's those like simple, open-minded, like it's it seems simple, but it's really not because it's fun. You're creating memories with people, you know, nine of cups, positive energy, positive me and um memories, positive momentum, open-mindedness with the Ace of Swords and Three of Wands, like very um, happy-go-lucky, very energetic, planning things, wanting to go do things, um, agreeing to go do things together. And this person's like, I love how amped up you make me feel. I love how you make me feel like I wanna go explore shit or let's go look at shit together. Or, let's go explore shit together. Go, let's go look at weird architecture together whatever you're into, pile number two, okay? And um, it's fun, right? And here's the strength card too. Oh, I love that. And, um, you know, and I feel like this person is saying that you'd be really good for them um, because you're like a super strong role model for people. I feel like pile number two, okay? And also you're very like animalistic, primal, 
you know, all of that in the bedroom as well, like very passionate, very in tune with your sacral chakra and very like energetic is what I'm getting and very confident and sexy and proud of who you are. And um, some of you here, like you may, I'm seeing someone who's like way taller than the other person as well. I also see a couple giraffes in the background here and someone who's like way taller. Um, so somebody here could be like way taller than the other person. But I feel like, you know, this person's saying like, you've got a lot of the qualities that I really look for in someone, like someone that I can be really proud of being with, um, somebody that I can take places, someone I can have similar interest with, somebody that's like really open, can talk about anything, makes other people like laugh and makes them feel very open. So, hey, pile number two, what's going on here? Ooh, we've got insatiable and feeling your energy. Okay now. And I feel like it's kind of an interesting thing with this pile because it's like, I feel you guys were like, yeah, you know, Natalie, I was like vibing with somebody. And I don't know, I thought maybe they just liked me as a friend or I just liked them as a friend, or I didn't really know. We were like kind of vibing. I didn't know they were all that into me like that. Cause yeah, they are with this insatiable feeling your energy because you have really good energy with the nine of cups. Like you're relaxed, you're fun, you're open, you're talkative, you're excited about things in life. Ooh, we've got love nest, road trip, and weekend fun. That's what I was talking about the whole time, right? And everybody's idea of fun is different, right? For some people, it's like, ooh, let's go to the library and get a bunch of weird books and, you know, read passages to each other in the park. <laughs> that could be, you know what I mean? But it's like, whatever, like, let's go. <laughs> Let's go on a weekend warrior, you know, road trip. And I feel like one of you has a really spontaneous idea to go somewhere and it it's like, should we? And it's like, hell yeah, we should. And then you end up having a really good time. Ooh, we've got that red light special, pamper and take care of you. And I think you guys are really used to um, always making the plans, pile number two. Like some of you here, you may be always the one organizing everything or always making up the plans or coming up with the ideas. And I actually feel like this person wants to do something special for you and take you someplace really special and really cool and surprise you with a fun idea and be like, wouldn't that be cool, right? And I feel like that's awesome for you guys because it seems like you guys are always the one coming up with things uh, but this is pretty cool. Ooh, all right. We've got bad boys. All right, bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? All right. Now, sexually, um, this person has been a bad boy or a bad girl, I feel, in the past. But one thing I'm happy about is that this is coming out on the strength card. So I feel like you guys know how to handle a bad boy or a bad girl. You're like, oh, I'll whip that and them into shape. I ain't, I'm, you know, I don't have any, I'm bad too, all right? I'm naughty too. I got, I got my little wild side too, Natalie, okay? I feel like that's what you guys are saying to me. And you're like, I've tamed some of the wildest beasts out there, Natalie. I know what I'm doing. And I'm like, okay, bile number two, all right? But I feel like there is a very strong animalistic sexual energy between both of you and maybe you feel like this person um is a little bit of a player or maybe they were a player in the past or you know this type of thing and so you're like yeah i got my wild wild side too but i'm not gonna be bending that easy okay so there is that going on and i do feel like this person has uh, a naughty side to them. But like I said, I feel like you guys know what you're doing with that. Okay. But I also feel like your friends or the people around you are like, no more players for God sake, no more players, like enough of that shit. And maybe you guys are like that too. I don't want to be around any players, Natalie. I'm done with the players. Okay. So maybe this is a conversation you two are going to have or you're going to talk about this. 
Um, some of you may be getting it on with this person when you're on a trip with them or you're on a weekend trip with them. Um, and it could lead to some, you know, raw animalistic type of behavior. But I also feel like you guys with this seven of wands, you kind of stop it before it can go too far. Or you're like, nah, um, like I've tamed greater beasts than you. <laughs> so it's not going to go that far. Like that type of thing. I kind of feel like you guys are like putting up a brick wall when it comes to the sexual aspect of wanting to kind of do things right away. But let's see what else we got here. We've got antelope and decisive action. You are being told unequivocally that it is time to get moving. Set your intentions and take action toward making your dreams a reality. You have a door in front of you. Trust your instincts here. Okay. And I feel like this, you know, pile number two, there's a door opening and the strength card is all about trusting our instincts. And I kind of feel like in the past, you guys were like super open with people, very like say anything to them. They can say anything to you, guard down. But lately I do feel like you guys have, um, you know, you've been a lot stronger about putting boundaries and letting people in. And you've been a lot more fierce about protecting yourself and, you know, being protective towards the ones that you love, friends, family, etc., or, or people being that way towards you. Okay. And so it says there is a door open in front of you right now with this situation. Pile number two, it trust your instincts here. Okay. So, I, you know, this sometimes can feel like a first date or an initial meeting that pops off that's like really, really awesome and really amazing or the first couple dates or the first three dates are like fun, amazing, cool. And then it's like sleep together and then that person's all of a sudden in this, you know, player energy or whatever. So I think it's really important for you guys to take decisive action up front of how you want things to go and how you want things to proceed here, okay? And we have, ooh, ha <laughs> ha. Your song is Building a Mystery by Sarah McLaughlin. And the lyrics are, um, I feel like this person is going to take decisive action towards you. And I feel like they're going to trust their instincts and go after you. And um, But I also feel like it benefits you guys to maintain somewhat of a mystery towards this person and not be totally open with them and totally sharing of your thoughts or self with them immediately. That's my advice, pile number two, okay? And um, I feel like you guys are like, you don't have to tell me twice, Natalie. I already know, and I'm like, good, pile number two. Okay, but your lyrics are, you come out at night, that's when the energy comes, and the dark side is light, and the vampires roam, building a mystery, okay? And that's why I feel like being a little mysterious and not like completely going like on the first, second or third date and spending, you know, doing really intimate things or things you like, you know, manage your time up front. Like just go on a date for an hour or two, right? Don't turn it in. Maybe don't turn it into some huge road trip weekend thing if you're just kind of meeting someone, you know. Keep an air of mystery is what I would say. And pile, and I feel like the thing pile number two is you guys are like, Natalie, I'm so sick of games though. I just want to be myself. And I get it, pile number two. I really, really do. You guys are open. You're open-minded, et cetera. But there also is this um, side where you're being more, um, not. you're not, I don't feel like cautious is the right more. You're being more, um, controlled with the way that you go about things. And I like that. Okay. I do like that. Oh, what do you even see in me? Okay. So, um, wow, that's interesting. This person's like, you know, I haven't always been the best person. I've been a bad boy or a bad girl at times. I haven't always been the best. Um, sometimes I've, not treated people the best or I haven't done the best things with my life. And um, 
it's a mystery to me, like what you see in me. Okay. So I feel like this person sees you as this very strong, controlled person, passionate, decisive, open, outgoing, fun, but they're like, like, what do you even see in me? And I kind of feel like with the seven of wands, you guys are like, stop with that talk already. Cause that isn't like, I don't want to hear that, you know? And sometimes people ask that question, what do you even see in me? Because they want to hear a compliment or they want to hear. And I feel like you guys are very, with the nine of cups and the ace of swords, you guys are very sweet and nice about complimenting people. But I also feel like there are people out there who take advantage of that because they are, they like to hear nice things about themselves or they like to hear other people gas them up, okay? And I feel like you guys are like, uh-uh-uh, I'm not going to fall for that, Natalie. And I agree with you, don't fall for that pile number two, okay? If somebody's like looking for a compliment, um, mm -mm, yeah. We have music and be mine. Ooh, this person is saying, I hear a certain song and I think of you. Um, somebody here may love music or be into music or music just brings up like a lot of emotions. Um, people can sometimes like share music with each other. Sorry, pile number two, the dogs are crazy. <laughs> right now, if you heard that barking, I apologize. And um, anyway, but I feel like this person, maybe you guys listen to music together or a romantic song comes on the radio or whatever. And it's like, okay. Um, and it could spark up a conversation. Okay. Um, but there's that. The dogs are barking. Yeah, we have Helena Targaryen, the eccentric. And I feel like this is you guys. You guys are very eccentric. And maybe you like very eccentric music or different music. And, um, you know, some people will make like Spotify lists for the people that they like and share it with them. I'm just thinking of that Guns N' Roses song, um, You Could Be Mine from back in the day with music and be mine. Anyway, it's an old song, but <laughs> now it's like an ancient song now that we're in 2024. But anyway, let's, let me read this Helena Targaryen card to you guys. Cause I want to share this with you. And it says things aren't always what they seem. And sometimes truth presents themselves through signs, riddles, and stories. If things are confusing right now and you don't know which direction to head in, Try changing your perspective or even seeing the world more poetically. Yeah, music and lyrics. And sometimes we hear song lyrics and it reminds us of a person so much that we want to talk to them. And we're like, oh my God, you wouldn't believe I was walking around in, you know, Whole Foods the other day and I heard this song and it reminded me and all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, sometimes songs or even seeing the world more poetically. It might just be the case that you've overlooked something. Tilt your head, shift how you see the world and see if the way you see a particular issue changes, okay? And um, sometimes people are like mysterious and like, what do you even see in me and all that kind of stuff because they're afraid like once you get to know them, you won't like them as much, right? And I think that is sometimes the way to, um, sometimes people find it like sexy to be kind of mysterious or hard to get to know or things like that for, for various reasons, right? So um, let me close the door here. Anyway, pile number two, sorry about that, my dears. <laughs> So sometimes like thinking about the way a situation is presenting, like we can look at it in different ways and we can see how, why a person is acting like that way, like acting naughty or mysterious or like fishing for compliments or, you know, sometimes that bad boy, per, bad boy or bad girl persona hides those insecurities. Um, but also weirdly, sometimes you hear a certain song when you're with someone and it's like, oh my God. And all of a sudden you get it and you understand what's going on. We have survival here. 
okay? And um, this is card 47 and having to, having to focus too much on survival can take away the poetic, like fun explore, exploring aspect of life. And um, things like, you know, it's said in this card to think more poetically about life. And, you know, this is where we can open our minds to having more joy and um, doing exciting things, regardless of whether we have a partner or not, right? Like some of us have partners, some of us don't, but whatever. But opening our minds to things, trying new things, um, you know, sometimes when we are just focused on survival, we don't really get a chance to really do things that we enjoy, you know? And, um, yeah, so I think that that is interesting. Also, sometimes people hide who they really are because they're afraid that other people will discover them, find out who they really are and reject them. Or sometimes like even at our jobs or friendships or things like that, we hide who we truly are because we feel like we have to or we won't survive versus, you know, being able to truly be eccentric and show ourselves and be our weird selves, right? And I feel like this person, it takes them a lot to trust someone, even as open and open-minded as you are. I do feel like it takes a lot for this person um, to trust someone. And here's the thing. I feel like you guys don't have a problem being yourself, pile number two. You're, that's amazing. Congratulate yourself for that because you're confident in who you are. You can express yourself really well. You're, you can be fun and relaxed and engaging and open-minded. And those qualities come from a person who truly knows themselves and is confident in who they are and isn't having to hide themselves because for their survival, you know? Um, but not everybody gets that in life. Not everybody is able to do that in life and not everybody is at that point in their development when they can do that, right? And there's a lot of music that can remind us of surviving, like Eye of the Tiger and things like that. Um, like, you know, surviving and fighting and we've got the Eye of the Tiger and all of that. And this person may have had a lot of situations in their life um, where they've had to hide or not show who they are, or they were always looked at as a bad person or a bad kid or um, somebody who, you know, is, and I feel like this person may actually be kind of sensitive underneath all of that, okay? And I feel like you guys are just like weird enough and eccentric enough to kind of see those qualities in them. Ah, yes, we have full moon in cancer. A personal issue reaches resolution. Okay, so um, like this is the feeling nature. This is the emotions and the feelings. And sometimes people give off that like bad boy, bad girl, mysterious energy, but underneath it, they're actually soft and sensitive, full moon and cancer, right? They're soft, they're sensitive, they're poetic, music really hits them hard, they're super empathic, um, they've got like a little goth side to them or a little like, you know, emo side to them. I actually feel like this person has like a sexy little emo gothy side to them that they don't really um, let other people see too much or they don't let other people into too much. There's more depth there to this person than maybe you would have thought at first. And um, there's a lot, and this person could have grown up, you know, in a family where there wasn't a lot of money or survival was, you know, very important, um, you know, emotional needs not getting met and things like that. And it could be a little scary for this kind of, for this person to let someone see them emotionally but I actually feel like you and this person would have really good sexual chemistry pile number two I just have to say that okay and um if there was any question about this person's emotions and how they are and why they are I feel like it will reach a resolution and there will be clarity on because I feel like some of you may start thinking this person's like a bad boy or a bad girl or a player and all they want is one thing 
But I, I feel like as, you know, time goes on, you discover there's actually like more there to them, okay? So pile number two, that is what I am getting for you, my loves. I hope that that reading resonated for you. And I would love to hear your thoughts, your comments, and your feedback. Take care, pile number two. Wishing you the very best, my loves. Let's move on to pile number three. Pile number three, welcome to your reading. You chose the Virgo pile and today's reading is called It's Electric, Their Thoughts and Feelings. So pile number three, let's go ahead and get into it. Thank you so much, my loves, for being here today and um, wishing you all a very beautiful day to you and yours. Let's go ahead and see. For pile number three, Spirit, can you show me what are their thoughts and feelings here for pile number three? What are their thoughts and feelings for pile number three? One, two, three, four. We've got the Hierophant on the bottom of the deck. A lot of earth energy so far in this reading with Virgo and Taurus with the Hierophant here. So we could have Virgo Taurus energy going on, but let's go ahead and see their thoughts and feelings. Ooh, the high priestess, mysterious, hard to get to know. All right, deep, emotional, moody at times, even moody. We've got the seven of wands. Ooh, this person's like, it's so hard to try to figure out what you're feeling. It's so hard to, um, I feel like it's a little, the vibe between you two is kind of funny. I feel like your guys' energy levels are way different. I feel like there's somebody here who maybe likes to smoke out or chill or have a couple drinks. And then there's someone else here who's extremely energetic, has a lot of energy, could be super athletic. Um, way different like expressions of energy. I also feel like we could have a night person and a day person here, like someone who um, likes to be up late at night and sleeps during the day, and then someone who is up during the day and um, really active and energetic during the day, but not at night, okay? And so I kind of feel this energy between you and this person as you kind of have like a lot of, maybe you have opposite schedules, opposite sleep schedules, opposite work schedules. Um, one person is, and I feel like this person's like, I'm trying so hard to figure you out. I'm trying so hard, pile number three, to figure you out. Like this person's trying to figure you out. And you guys are like, what? It's not that hard, God, you know? And they're like, are you kidding me? I'm over here breaking my back trying to figure you out. <laughs> so this is already kind of funny, pile number three, in a funny way, okay? We've got the Ace of Pentacles here. And um, I feel like this person sometimes worries about making you mad or upsetting you. And, um, you know, they may feel that you're kind of defensive at times or, like I said earlier, moody. But it could also just be that they're talking to you at a time when you're not like fully awake or you're not like fully present. You're like, my spirit has left my body, you know, after <laughs> my spirit doesn't enter my body until 8 p.m. at night. And even then it's a little like I'm not fully in my body. OK, so <laughs> I understand pile number three if you feel that way. But this person's like, geez, it's hard to get a hold of you. Geez, it's hard to know when you're going to be around. Geez, it's hard to pin you down or make a plan, you know? And I do feel like this person's like, ooh, yeah, speaking of pinning you down, like, I love to pin you down and get a little crazy or whatever. And I feel like you guys are like, huh? You know, you're like, pin me down. I don't like that. And they're like, uh, sorry, awkward. You know, <laughs> that type of energy. Let's have a do-over, right? With the Ace of Pentacles. It's like, okay, do-over, 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 do-over. Um, 
you know, and with one person being like totally active and then the other person being like ultra chill, it's kind of like, okay, reset, 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 Ace of Pentacles. And we've got two of swords. And um, I feel like this person is saying, um, I'm going to give it my all. I do want to talk to you and get to know you, but you're giving me nothing here. I don't know how you feel. I don't know if you even really like me. Sometimes I feel like you're ignoring me and um, I'm not really sure. Like I, I want to try to get to know you or I want to try to talk to you, date you, etc. But it seems like you're always busy or you're maybe your schedule pile number three is very variable or it's very up and down. I just feel like you're a difficult one to pin down, okay? And um, I feel like this person is saying, let's have a do-over, Ace of Pentacles. Let's have a do-over, but what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? Whose house are we gonna go to? Where are we gonna go? What do you wanna do? Where should we meet? Like, it's kind of like, plans are just kind of like, they start like with an offer of let's meet at such and such time, let's, go here, go there. And then it's like, oh, I can't, I'm going to be late or this types of things. I am seeing the name Theo on this card here. I'm seeing the letters T and H and E, but I'm also seeing the name Theo. I'm also seeing G and the initials TK. Okay. TK and the number three. Okay. Somebody's birthday could be in March. It could be on the third day of the month, but I just have to tell you what I am seeing there, okay? I'm also seeing like a Puff the Magic Dragon type of a figure in this card as well. And um, <laughs> I am seeing somebody's greasy little finger mark on this card as well. So maybe someone in this pile tends to have greasy little fingers. But anyway, I know it's my own greasy little finger pile of three, but, but I just saw it on this two of swords and I'm like, oh, better cling that, you know, clean that off of there, right? Virgo, Virgo pile. So anyway, you know, it's like, let's come together with a clear plan, a clear way forward. Let's get the details. But I feel like the details are always shifting or it's always like, okay. Um, and this connection with the Hierophant here is a need of a grounding okay it's in need of um calm grounding energy where um uh, and some of you here it dating may be hard for you sometimes pile number three for some of you your nervous system may get really agitated um by the actions of certain people like it's either too much or they're not clear enough or you just get kind of um you know, a little bit done in by maybe sometimes by the way things are planned or the way things are going. And, um, you know, and it may really result in this person having to work kind of hard to do something. Um, but I feel like with this two of swords, it's kind of a question mark now. And it's kind of like, now what, you know, I'm kind of getting that energy of now what. So let's see. Ooh, Victoria's Secrets, see-through lingerie. Well, that is very high priestess, the high priestess, like wearing something see-through and floaty and mysterious and um, like, yeah, I could definitely, um, I bet, I feel like this person does fantasize about you, pile number three, with the Victoria's Secret see-through lingerie, um, or if you wear clothes or you have a robe that's very see-through or a nightie that's very see-through, um, this person's like, I'm trying to see, you know, I'm trying to see through it. I want to see through it. Okay. I also feel like this person feels that you have your key, your secrets or that you keep secrets sometimes file number three. Okay. And you're like, what? I'm an open book. I'm not keeping any secrets, but this person's like, yeah, what secret is what you got going on underneath that robe. And you're like, I don't have any secrets. And they're like, yes, you do. And then they're like, look at those hips. I see all those secrets. And you're like, I don't have any. And they're like, yes, you do. <laughs> so there we go, pile number three. We have performance and putting on a show, right? So again, this is coming out under the seven of wands. So this person's like, Annie up. I got to Annie up. I got to kick it into gear. 
you know, I got to really, um, you know, be proud and strong and outgoing and show confidence and act like I know what I'm doing. No pressure, right? Like this person's like sweating across their brow and you're like, sweat, that's gross, you know? <laughs> and they're like, give me a towel. I'm sweating across my brow. And you're like, okay, I guess here's a towel. All right. But <laughs> we got that going. Ooh, we got the assets with the booty lover. Okay. So this person is definitely into the booty pile. Number three, big time, big time into the booty. And they're like, yeah, number one asset, ace of pentacles. Shake it. If you got it, shake your money maker with that booty lover. Okay. And, um, this person is definitely in two butts, pile number three, okay? Straightforward. They like it. They're like, put on a show for me. Do a little dance for me. Shake that ass for me. And you guys are like, huh? You know, you're like, yeah, I do have some really nice lingerie, but like, don't, dem you know, you're coming across as the high priestess. And the high priestess in this card in this deck, she's got a little bit of an attitude, okay? So it's like, oh, you want me to shake that thing? Okay, well, you better put on a show for me too, like that type of thing, okay? Um, but I do feel like this person could be into spankings and stuff like that as well. I just got to say pile number three with that booty. We've got two of swords and breadcrumbing. Are you breadcrumbing this person, pile number three? Okay, they're like, you showed me that booty, or I saw that booty, and it really made me want to take you out, or say hi, or say hello, and um, you say hi, I say hello, and, um, <laughs> and I feel like this person is saying, yeah, you got it, you know you got it, you know you got that booty, you know you got the things that I like and the sexy things that I want, but you're breadcrumbing me. So are you breadcrumbing this person, pile number three? Because they kind of feel like you're breadcrumbing them. You're like, huh, I'm not, no. Okay, high priestess, you're like, I'm just being myself, I'm not breadcrumbing them. <laughs> I love it. File number three. I love it. We have bear and strength. You're like, you know what? As soon as you show these people any type of strength, all this, all of a sudden they think you breadcrumb, you're breadcrumbing them and you're just being yourself or whatever. Okay. Um, but I also feel like this person knows that you're very sensitive or can tell that sometimes the things that people do the things that people, the things people do can sometimes piss you off and the way that people act sometimes can really get at you, pile number three, or piss you off. And I feel like this person is saying, you know, if you're having a bad day or something's going wrong, you can lean on me. And I also feel like they want to put on a show for you and show you how strong they are and how confident they are and how, you know, like tough they are and masculine, even, you know, tough and strong and sexy in the bedroom and all of that. But I also feel like you guys are at a point in your life where you're like, okay, I'm not really impressed with all that. I'm more impressed with emotional strength. I'm more impressed with what you have in the, on the inside rather than, you know, do you have a nice car? Do you, are you strong? Can you lift a lot of weights? Like that type of thing. So I feel like, you know, yeah, you guys have a lot of the qualities that this person likes, but I also feel you guys are a lot deeper and you're looking to connect on a much deeper level as well. And you sometimes get annoyed with people only seeing the physical, you know? And um, it says the bear symbolizes a strong source of support in times of difficulty and adversity. It may be time for you to stand up for your beliefs or your truth with strength and confidence. You are free to roam at will and follow your path, right? And maybe sometimes people in the past would go after you pretty hard, pile number three, like trying to impress you, trying to get you to warm up to them. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's not really like it's, yeah, I, I like to go out with somebody who's financially secure, someone that has money, someone that's stable. 
Carol Font energy. I am looking for commitment and all of that, but it can't just be like a physical, yeah, you like my ass type of thing, okay? I mean, yeah, that's fun, but it's, right? Ooh, and here's, <laughs> and I feel like, okay, I feel like you guys definitely got the upper hand on this one, pile number three, all right? Because this person, their song to you is Out of Touch by Hall and Oates. And the lyrics are, you're out of touch and I'm out of time, but I'm out of my head when you're not around, okay? So again, this person thinking that you are breadcrumbing them, okay? And um, they're like, why are, you, why are you breadcrumbing me? And you're like, huh? I'm not breadcrumbing you. I'm just taking my time. I'm just doing what I want. And um, they're like, I'm over here breaking a sweat and you're out of touch and I'm out of time. Okay. And I feel like what they're saying with the Ace of Pentacles is they're like, you know, I tried, I'm trying, etc. I'm trying to make something happen here, but I just don't know what to do anymore. Now what? Okay. You're out of touch and I'm out of time. I don't, I don't know. It is, can this go anywhere? I feel like is a question. And it says, I wish I could make you happy, but I need to make my make me happy first. And maybe that's something you guys are dealing with, pile number three, where you, um, like this, I actually feel like this person is cute. They, um, they're stable with the Ace of Pentacles and the Herald font. They work hard. Um, they, you know, they could also look good. They could be a decent catch and somebody that you would normally be interested in. But lately, maybe you just haven't been, you know, you're like, you're needing to work on things within yourself or you're needing to, you're not sure how you want to approach your love life right now. So you're not wanting to really commit to too much right now because you're not fully invested yet in what this could be or how it could play out. But I feel like it's not just with this person. It could be kind of an overall thing you're going through right now. And with this Hierophant energy, maybe you are needing to get in touch with your spirituality on a deeper level and the High Priestess. And um, you're working on like your inner strength, your emotional strength. You're working on, um, you know, your own like decision-making process when it comes to relationships and things like that. And I kind of feel like this person thinks that it seems like maybe you're moody or upset or things like that. And they wish that they could make you happy, but it seems like you're not interested or it seems like you need to make your own self happy first. So there may be some of that going on here. We have trust here. And I feel like what your guys is issue could be, could be trusting in people. Um, because it seems like all people want is to be show-offs and have trophies, like treat their partners as a trophy. Oh, look at, I got this sexy person and they're mine and, and show off their partner, treat their partner like a piece of ass, you know, that type of stuff, pile number three. And I feel like this is where, you know, you guys are like way done with that in a way. Um, not in a way, like you are. And you're like, you know, I'm looking for somebody that has inner strength. I'm not looking for somebody that just wants me for my body or just thinks, you know, I'm a trophy, something that they can collect. And, you know, some of you may be breadcrumbing this person because you don't fully trust them yet. You know, you've been through adversity and difficulty in relationships and it's made you less trusting. And yeah, you have all these beautiful assets about you. And a lot of people would be interested in you, I feel like, Ace of Pentacles. A lot of people maybe try to date you or flirt with you. Um, you know, some people, they go on a dating app and within an hour, they have like 300 messages, you know? <laughs> like, it's crazy, right? But at the same time, I feel like what's really bothering you guys is feeling like it's hard to trust people or that you're not trusting um, a situation. Yes, we have trust in unfaithful because people are lying ass pieces of shit and it's really, really hard to trust people. And some of you have been through it emotionally in the past with cheaters and, you know, narcissists or people where they all they care about is looking good and having a person that looks good. 
and treating people like objects and that type of thing, okay? And some of you have dealt with um, nasty people that all they do is care about themselves and cheaters and stuff like that, okay? When you put your trust in someone and they were very unfaithful, okay? So yeah, I think that's what is bothering you guys. And um, you know, perhaps some of you are, if this is a brand new person and you're just getting to know them, Perhaps you are breadcrumbing them a little bit because you're like, I just don't trust everything yet. I don't know. I'm not sure about the situation yet. We have, ooh, I love Missandei. You guys have Missandei and The Voice. And, you know, she was known for being so wonderful and wise and um, noticing the way that other human beings hurt each other and... Um, noticing how other human beings like treat each other and hurt each other and being very wise about how she approaches things. And I just want to read this Masandi card. Being able to communicate not only with others, but on behalf of others is a powerful skill. Right now you are being called to be the voice for those who cannot speak. This may mean acting as a go-between for individuals and groups or interpreting for those who are no longer with us or otherwise disempowered from speaking. It's important, yeah, you know, speaking and standing up with strength for people that cannot stand up for themselves and finding your true core spiritual power um, in that experience, okay? Advocating for people who haven't had a voice. And maybe there was a point in your life when you didn't have a voice and you didn't feel like you could speak to some of the difficulties and adversities that you were going through, but now you can, and you're empowered to do that. It's important to remember that this moment isn't really about you, it's about the outcome of connections you can facilitate. While, it may, while this may be tough at times, you can rest well knowing you are playing a vital role. So it may not be, some of you could actually be connecting um, you know, some of you here could be powerful matchmakers, even pile number three, or um, introducing two people who are very grateful to have met because you introduced them, right? And you may see people, um, you know, you may have seen situations as well, like even with your own parents where, you know, uh, one of your parents broke trust with the other parent and cheated on them. And you've seen these situations and you've seen how they hurt people and you've seen how it fucks people up and bringing healing into these situations and bringing a voice to these situations is something that is very important for you spiritually and for your spiritual growth. And I do feel some of you could even be matchmaking in the future and bringing other people together. And um, just remember that if you do that, after you do that, it's kind of out of your hands, right? Um, it's up to them to treat the relationship responsibly, okay? And um, here we have curiosity. Yep, sometimes like, I feel like this is where you guys are kind of like, um, I also feel that this person really likes your voice and thinks that you have a very sexy voice and they're very curious to come to your house or to get to know you more or to hear what you have to say. Um, or to hear your story. I do feel like this person is curious to hear why you um, like hold back sometimes or why you're, why like things have, why you may not trust people as much, you know, why you're a bit more um, held back in that regard because of those trust things that have come up in your relationships. And I feel like this person is very curious to understand more about you and more about these reasons and more about your thinking and how you think about things, okay? And I also feel there is a part of you that is curious about this situation with this person, but you're also still hurting, I feel like, pile number three because of a situation that was very unfaithful to you. And I feel like you think about it a lot because you're like, okay, how? why do people do this to each other? Um, why do people treat each other this way? And um, I feel like on, you know, a heart level, it can make you sad at times, pile number three. And I, I totally get that, my friends. And I do think, um, 
you know, I do think for those of you that have seen like a shaman, priest, um, you know, healer over any of these issues, or you've been curious to have a spiritual experience to address some of these issues of trust and people being unfaithful, and you've been curious about seeing a shaman or a healer to deal with some of these emotional issues um, from the past, I do feel that would be very good for you, pile number three. And yeah, and here we have the full moon in Capricorn, the end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in Capricorn, okay? And um, some of you are very curious, like when is this phase of mine going to end? And when am I really going to um, be able to trust again? And when will I be able to tell my story and, um, you know, and when am I going to be able to like feel open again towards things, okay? An end of a tough cycle is approaching for you. And I think you can kind of feel that this end of this cycle is closing because you're starting to become curious again about healing some of these issues. And you're starting to become curious again about talking to people or getting to know people. It still may be a little bit too early, pile number three. There's still maybe to do a little more work here, but the end of a tough cycle is approaching. It's going to be, I feel like by the end of this year, by Capricorn season, um, you know, in this full, we just had a full moon in Capricorn actually, like a few days ago, and it may have illuminated a lot for you on this very issue. Um, and I feel by Capricorn season or by the end of this year, you're going to be more ready for things if you're wanting to put yourself out there again. Because right now, you may still be working on some things or working on some healing and things like that. That's fine if you need to go slower and take things slow, slower and, um, you know, work with, with some of these trust issues and be curious about this cycle. Uh, write things down. Speak about it. Talk to someone about it. Um, spiritual work about it. I think all of that is appropriate. So pile number three, that is what I am getting for you, my friends. I hope that this reading resonated for you and I wish you all the very best. Take care.